Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So today we're going to talk about some unconventional items that you can put in your bug out bag or survival kits. Hopefully you never have to use them, but they may prove useful in an emergency situation. So let's get to it. So there's a thousand and one videos out there that talk about the staple items that you should put in a bug out bag, whether it be food, water, shelter, cordage, fire making material, cookware, clothing, hunting tools, first aid kits, self-defense tools, navigation, lighting, cutting tools, things of that nature. I plan on doing a more in-depth survival bag soon. But in this video, I wanna talk about some not so common items. These are probably things that you have around the house already, and if not, most of them are very inexpensive. And they are gonna give you a practical advantage if you find yourself in some sketchy survival predicament. I've done dedicated video reviews on some of these items, although many years ago when I had one quarter of the subscriber count I currently do now, so I think a lot of my newer subscribers would benefit from this information. And I will post links to all of these items in the description if you choose to integrate them into your survival system. So the first one is nails. A nail is a very inexpensive, lightweight piece of metal which has so many uses, more than I can possibly name. You can use it to hang things, you can use it to build shelters, you can build furniture with it for your campsite, you can build yourself a, a seat between two trees, you can make primitive weapons, you can make jigs to make bowstrings, or to weave a net, or to stake a tent. There's a thousand and one uses for a nail. Even putting a half dozen decent sized nails into your bug out bag could prove very useful because you never know when you're gonna need to spear a fish. And there's so many times that I go out camping that all I need is a place to put a nail and I might be in a pine forest or something like that and there's no branches on the lower parts of the trees. So, you know, I'm trying to find a place to hang my bug out roll. And uh, sure enough, if you have a nail with you, that resolves a lot of different issues. So put nails in your bug out bag. Next is a contractor bag. You're gonna wanna go higher than three mil. You're gonna want a nice, thick contractor bag. This can be used for so many different things. It can be used for collecting wild edibles, making a mattress. You could stuff it with leaves or other natural materials to provide a soft, bed to lay on so you're not losing heat to the ground especially in winter this would be very useful you can use it to waterproof your gear you can use it to waterproof yourself you could use it for hauling wood you could even make a stretcher out of it if you had to haul a friend out of a bad situation if it's an orange contractor bag you could use it for signaling as well it could be used as a solar still there's a thousand and one reasons to have a contractor bag in your backpack so put one in there. Another thing that would also perform some of the functions would be one of those reusable grocery bags. It would be slightly more abrasion resistant. However, it's not going to be as big. So some of the things I just mentioned, it's not going to be able to do like you're not going to be able to use it to make a solar still. Next up is salt. Salt is abundant right now, but there was a time in the world when salt was such a hot commodity that was actually used as a currency. Salt will provide you with electrolytes, it will help you stay hydrated, it's going to help you make all of those wild edibles and squirrels that you have to eat more palatable, it's going to help you with food preservation, it can help you with cleaning wounds. So if you're going to have any white powdery substance in your bug out bag, Make it salt, and don't worry, we're gonna talk about stimulants in just a minute. Now next up is a pair of binoculars or monoculars. Now this is gonna be the most expensive thing on this list, and you can spend up to hundreds of dollars on a good pair of binoculars or monocular, but you don't have to. You can get a decent one for 20 to 30 bucks. What a lot of people fixate on when they're purchasing some optics is the magnification power, but that's not the only thing you wanna consider. You also wanna look at something called the objective lens diameter. That's basically the, the size of the field of view that you're going to see through it. So you may get a monocular that has a 30 times magnification, but if the objective lens is too small, you're not going to have a very wide field of view of the scene that you're looking at. So this is where getting a larger set of binoculars actually is very advantageous but this comes at the cost of taking up a lot of space in your backpack. And if you are using optics that are high magnification and a very narrow, small field of view, 
you're probably going to want to have a mini tripod or something to help you keep that steady because it's very hard to hold them steady at their maximum power. Now as you bring them back in power the field of view is going to expand so so having a variable monocular is good but you should consider those potential drawbacks. Now why would you want a set of specs in your bug out bag? Well it should be obvious. Scouting, route finding, hunting, security, Extending the range of your vision is going to mean you expend less energy doing unnecessary traveling and you may avoid dangerous situations. And animals, especially the ones that you're trying to hunt, are exceptionally camouflaged to the environments that they're in. So it's very likely that they are within visual range of you, but you just can't see them with the naked eye. And they are going to detect you long before you detect them unless you are using some kind of optic. A quick scan of the distant perimeter may reveal a world teeming with life, especially at night time. So if you even wanted to go one step further, you could get yourself a night vision monocular. I have reviewed one of those on this channel before. I will post a link in the description. All right, so back to the powdery substances. Now, caffeine pills are something that take up almost no space whatsoever. And they are something that can have a very profound effect on your physiology in proportion to the very small space that they take in your survival bag. Now, obviously what goes up must come down. If you take caffeine, there's gonna be a bit of a crash. It's not gonna kill you. You're not trying to be some vegan naturalist purist. All of a sudden when you're out there in the wilderness, most of you drink coffee every day anyways. So just put a few caffeine pills in your survival bag. You would be amazed at how those things can make you move in a desperate situation. And you may find yourself in a situation where you need to stay awake, whether that's to prevent the onset of uh, hypothermic coma or to protect yourself from vandals or maybe you want to be awake if there's a search and rescue team passing by your area at the time or maybe you're just worried about predators in the environment anyways put them in your bug out bag forget about them hopefully you never have to use them up next is gloves now this one's a bit more common but it is absolutely worth reiterating the importance of gloves and wearing them from the start because if there's anything that you don't want to get cut, it's your hands. Because you're going to be touching a lot of messy things and the risk of infection is going to be very high in any survival situation. They're also going to increase your physical capability. You're going to be less reluctant to grab that branch that might save your life. And they're also going to provide you with a little bit of warmth. So get yourself a good pair of gloves. Next up is a headlamp, and yes, this one is probably quite common in a lot of people's bug out bags nowadays, but it's worth noting the importance of, because a lot of people just have handheld flashlights. And if you're in a true survival situation, your hands are probably going to be preoccupied enough without having to handle a flashlight to see what you're doing in the middle of the night. You're gonna need your hands to perform a variety of functions, which may require a lot of precision and nano dexterity, and you don't wanna to have to be struggling trying to shine a light on something while you're trying to do that, because the last thing you wanna do is be cutting wood in the middle of the night and you know swing that ax the wrong way and cut yourself. So get yourself a decent headlamp. I'll post a link in the description for one. Up next is something way more practical, and that's proof of identity. Chances are whatever disaster you're fleeing is not going to be a national or international doomsday one. And even if it does go that way, having proof of who you are, and if you do have proof of what your occupation was, that could go a long way in terms of your ability to network post-collapse. People would be more likely to trust you if you could prove to them that, hey, I am a person who used to work in law enforcement, or I'm a person who used to be a nurse, or I used to be a carpenter, or something like that. I can contribute this to your community. Because for me personally, if the crap hit the fan and we reverted to some anarchic form of tribalism and you were wary of everybody you came across, I would want to see some ID and I would want to know that the people I'm coming across weren't ex-convicts and basically just were who they said they were. Up next is something which is a subject of contention in the preparedness community, but it's breaching tools. That being a lock picking set and a small pair of bolt cutters. Obviously you're not going to be able to lug around a very large pair of bolt cutters, it's just not going to be practical. 
but you may come across a lot of fences you may come across a lot of abandoned areas that you can potentially get into to access resources so having a lock pick kit and having some smaller breaching tools on your person could come in handy you may find yourself crossing a lot of barbed wire fences and a lot of those are easy to get across without having to cut them down but that is just one other potential way to injure yourself and last thing you want to do is uh, get cut with a rusty piece of barbed wire up next is a physical map because we have become so dependent on GPS having a topographical map set on your phone is great while the grid is up because GPS works in such a way that the satellites have to communicate with systems on the ground in order to calibrate themselves and if they can't do that relay every 24 hours or so and constantly be calibrating their distance then they're not going to be accurate after a few weeks now if you have a way to charge your cell phone or your tablet and you have lots of maps on there that's great but i think having a physical map would be very beneficial to have in that situation because it's not going to require electricity it's not so delicate that you you know you have to worry about water getting to it i know there's a lot of waterproof electronics nowadays but still you're definitely going to want to have a good physical map and a lensatic compass to make sure that you don't get lost in the woods which you undoubtedly probably will next up is toilet paper tablets yes i'm pitching toilet paper tablets again because they're freaking awesome they're not only for wiping your butt they're for a variety of other functions you can use them to filter out particulates out of your water it's not going to filter out bacteria or viruses or anything like that but it will get out some of the grass and debris and particulate matter they can be used as a fire starter and just a general washcloth and they're very dense in your bag so put them in your bag and forget about them up next is you guessed it a good saw because a lot of people still are prioritizing axes over saws and while an axe is undoubtedly going to outlast any saw we're talking years on it's still not as efficient for chopping wood when i see people relying on axes whether it's to cut down trees or just cut up firewood it's so incredibly inefficient and it's such a poor use of your energy the saw is 10 times superior to the axe the only thing the axe has on the saw is that it's going to last longer but i'm telling you one swing and a miss and all of the energy that you're going to have to exert to cut down an axe i can cut down a tree with a saw in one one hundredth the time that somebody can cut it down with an axe and i'm not even exaggerating for some of the bigger trees and some of the bigger saws that i have but get yourself a decent saw i'm not going to pitch the you know what saws but go to my website if you want to get some of the best saws on the planet up next is camouflage you can go and buy yourself uh, some hunting blind fabric and just throw that in your bug out bag you know you might need it you might not but if you find yourself being being chased or pursued or you're just wanting to go undetected wrap that around you and become invisible next up is a shovel i've reviewed a survival shovel on this channel before which i would highly recommend a shovel has a multitude of functions and uh, go watch that review i'll post a link in the description and the shovel i'm talking about is very small and compact for the record so no i don't expect you to lug around a full-size shovel this one actually is very compact and it folds into itself so go check it out and lastly i know i said i wasn't going to touch on the basics in this video but it's important to have a good type of cordage and the cordage i would recommend would be titan survivor cord it is far superior to normal paracord it's stronger within it you have a wire for snaring animals you have fishing line and you also have some waxed i believe it's it's possibly jute twine but it's some sort of waxed fiber and that's going to allow you to obviously start fires so if you're still watching this video i hope one or two of these suggestions was useful to you let me know in the comment section if you have any other ideas for some offbeat items to add to a survival kit thanks for watching don't forget to like comment subscribe canadian prepper out the best way to support this youtube channel is to support yourself by gearing up through canadianpreparedness.com or bugoutroll.ca 
premium quality gear at the best possible price using the incredibly secure and easy to use Shopify platform. We offer free shipping to the United States for orders over $200 USD and free shipping to Canada over $75. So support the channel by supporting yourself.